Really? Just a couple of announcements before we open the Word of God. I want to remind you that our schedule is quite different right now. We're only meeting on Wednesday nights at 7, Sundays at 11, and Sundays at 6. And uh, this week is the end of the month. Uh, how many of you have gotten your stimulus checks yet? Anybody get your stimulus money yet? Uh, how many haven't gotten it yet? So I went to the church, I mean, I went to the government website, and it says they're going to send it to me on Wednesday. So I was kind of fascinated by that. I don't know why they didn't just go ahead and send it instead of waiting, but that's their business, I guess. And uh, anyway, uh, pray for our government, pray for our nation. Um, <clears throat> a wise person once said, the government cannot give money to anybody unless it takes it from someone else. Right. Where is the $1,200 coming from? Our children. <laughs> and uh, maybe we shouldn't chuckle so much, but uh, they'll be paying the taxes that, re fund, that return that money. Uh, approximately at this time, our government has about as much debt, I understand, I didn't study this closely, but uh, as our gross national product. And what that would mean is it would be kind of like you and I being in debt for a full year's pay. And by the way, it's revolving debt, it's not equity. It's, uh, it's like having a credit card bill the size of your annual pay. Not good. So I'll pray for our nation. Well, let's open our Bibles tonight to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Brother Mendez gave me a candy bar. Amen. Is there a significance behind this? Or, uh, keep your energy up. Keep my energy up. Amen. Is there a No, it's, uh, <laughs> I, it's uh, kind of yeah, a kind bar with nuts and spices in it. And uh, it's going to be part of my dinner here in about an hour. <laughs> Do you realize how good we've got it? Amen. Wow. I, I, I have not seen a lot in my life. I've never been to a communist country. I've never been to Russia or China. Um, I've uh, been to a few places. I've been to Thailand a number of times. I've seen the way people live in Thailand. I've been to Mexico many times. I went to Mexico back when I was a young man. Uh, in the 1960s and 70s, Mexico's different now than it was then. It is, yeah. uh, You did not see Applebee's in Mexico in the 1970s. It was just not that way. Uh, I've been to a little town in Mexico, and I remember seeing a pastor that um, he had lost his job, and so the only way he could make money was to sell popsicles. And uh, his children, I remember, had two little cars and the missionary asked me, he said, uh, do you know how many toys those children have? And I said, no, and he said, you're looking at them right there, two little cars, that was it. Uh, but not just that, think of the blessings we have. Um, we drive vehicles that we don't question normally. We, uh, we have jobs that pay us normally, and if we don't, God gives us work, doesn't he? He provides our needs, yes. we have our health, we have our church, we have a Bible. Amen. Uh, we live in a nation that it's not as free as it used to be, but it's still one more free than most. Um, when you go to a place like Israel or a place like um, uh, Iraq or Iran or someplace like that and try to preach the gospel, see what happens. And uh, we can go out pretty much. It's sad that people begin to hate the gospel in our nation. We've seen some of that. But uh, we've got it good. I think you would agree with me. We are blessed. People. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I'm in Luke chapter, 20, uh, I'm Luke chapter 11, and I want to look at two verses tonight, particularly one verse, actually. It's a short verse, uh, but we're going to look at the two of them together. Uh, and uh, just look at that question, what is the condition of blessing? And let's go ahead and stand for the reading of God's Word. We'll read this and have a word of prayer, and then we'll spend some time. I think this is a very practical message. I think we can all get something from this tonight. The Bible says in Luke chapter 11, verse 27, it came to pass... As he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bear thee, and the paps which thou hast sucked. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Amen. Amen. Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Let's ask God to bless our time. Father, it's sad that we take so many blessings for granted that we just can live in a situation where our needs are met, we're healthy, we're safe, and 
We have provision, we have food and shelter and clothing and health care and transportation and, and uh, all the things that uh, we use to live our lives from day to day. And then we have blessings on top of that. Uh, we, uh, we can enjoy uh, prosperity that, that most of the world can't even understand or comprehend. And, uh, and Lord, we have freedom to worship, although that has been infringed in recent days, but here in our state, we still have freedom to worship. We have a Bible in our language that we have heard preached literally thousands and thousands of hours, and there are countless books and, and messages that we can refer to to understand it better. Lord, so many things that, that we have. We have a church. We have a church that you have planted and provided for and protected for so many years. And, uh, we can come here and we can worship you <clears throat> according to our conscience and uh, freedom and uh, so many things that you've given us. And Lord, sadly, even in spite of all these things, some of us want more. Some of us are distracted and we're looking for something else that would maybe give us a, a happiness that we don't experience right now because we take these things for granted. I pray that we would learn like Paul did, to be content uh, no matter what our condition. Uh, and Lord, we thank you tonight that we have this freedom. We, we could stay here all night if we wanted to. We, uh, we don't have uh, limitations like some people do. We don't worship in fear. But Lord, tonight we, we just can come and spend time in your word. I pray you'd bless our time tonight and be a blessing to our people. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, there's two questions I could ask, and they ought to have the same answer, but the first one is, are you blessed? Amen. Uh, we've already tried to launch out in that direction. Uh, do you feel blessed? Amen. 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 Hope you do. Um, somebody says, well, you know, I wish I was more prosperous. If I, I wish I had more money. If, uh, tomorrow, if, if uh, God gave me $1,000, then I'd, I'd be happy. Uh, you know what I found out? That minute you get that thousand you want a thousand more right. or that hundred you want a hundred more or whatever someone says well you know if God would solve a certain problem I, I've got a problem in my life right now and then we always have things that we're struggling with we go from one problem to the next sometimes someone says you know if that problem was solved uh, we have some young people here that are struggling uh, home school because we cannot assemble and uh, uh, the teachers are so mean they make their parents come once a week and get more work for them <laughs> Amen? Amen. <laughs> and they're saying, I wish school was out. Well, it will, it will be. Um, some people perhaps are facing health issues or whatever. A couple of us are going to have some tests done tomorrow. And uh, I, I pray that uh, we pass. Amen. And uh, that the Lord sees fit to give us a good report. But if he doesn't, then we have something to face. And uh, we face things all the time. You think if my problems were over, I'd be happy. You forget. How many times in the past has God solved your problems? Amen? Amen. That you need. Last week was a week like that for me. But from one thing to the next to the next. And, and uh, before you know it, that problem's gone. Here's a new one. And, and then God takes care of that. And here's something else. And you say, I'd be happy if I didn't have any problems. I really don't think so. I really think we misunderstand what it would take to make us happy. Especially young people misunderstand what it would take to make them happy. Would the older folks agree? Amen. Yes. Amen. Uh, sadly, young people, they, they, their limited experience in life makes them think if, if everyone liked them, they would be happy. Uh, if they had a lot of possessions, uh, the latest this or the nicest that, they would be happy. And uh, then you get older and you try those things and you find out that doesn't make you happy. I remember thinking, if I just had a car, I would be happy. My first car was a 1968 Buick Skylark, and it was just ugly. I told you about the ugly car before. I thought if I had a car, I'd be happy, and I liked that car. But then I thought if I had a better car, I'd be happy. And so I got a 1966 GTO. I wish I still had it, and that didn't work either. If I thought if I had another car, I'd be happy. And then about four cars into this, I figured it out. Cars don't make you happy. That's right. right. Amen. Uh, do you remember when you didn't have a house, if you didn't ever own a house, and some of you haven't, but many of you have, and I thought if I had a house, I'd be happy. And I got a house, and that didn't make me happy. And some people say, well, if I had a bigger house, I'd be happy. I can save you some time. Solomon, read Ecclesiastes. Solomon was the richest man that ever lived. 
And he was a ruler of Israel in such a way that they had no enemies that were able to confront them. They were, in, they were at peace. David was a man of war. Solomon was a man of peace. He had anything you could want. If he wanted to buy it, Solomon could afford it. Anything you could experience, if you wanted to experience it, Solomon could experience it. Solomon had, what, what are the numbers? 700 wives and 300 concubines? Or the other way around, it's a sad thing anyway. He had all the money he could want. He had physical experiences that he could want. He, he could buy whatever he wanted. He was the ruler of a powerful nation which was at peace. And he said this, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Amen. If you, had, if you could make a list of everything you want, and then you got it all, you still wouldn't be happy. Someone says, I'd like to try that. Solomon did. He can save you some time. You know, people are looking for happiness. They're looking for, the right word to use is satisfaction. Remember the woman at the well? And uh, she came to the Lord Jesus Christ and she had a water pot. And she wanted some water. And water, simply something that satisfies our thirst. It, it quenches an appetite that we have. It's just a simple picture. If you're thirsty, you're not satisfied until you get some water. Uh, and then, then that's different. She came to the well with the water pot. She met the Lord Jesus Christ. She debated religion with them. I'm not thinking that's the best idea to debate religion with Jesus. And, uh, and then ultimately she believed on him and the Bible says she left her water pot and she went into the city and said, come see a man that told me all things that ever I did is not this to Christ. She left her water pot. Her original goal was if I was, if I could just have a drink of water, I'd be satisfied. And she found something that really does satisfy. Amen. In fact, Jesus used the illustration in John chapter 4 that he could give her something that would give her permanent satisfaction. You can be wealthy and be unsatisfied. How many stories have you heard about people that win the lottery and wind up taking their life? You can be healthy. You can be famous. Uh, recently, every time I see this, it breaks my heart. Uh, it's not unusual. It happens many times a year that someone who has been incredibly successful in the entertainment industry, industry takes their own life. I'm talking about people that are, they are rich, they are accepted in their profession, they are admired, and, and people uh, are uh, just thrilled to get to see them perform, and then these people take their lives. And they, they got what they wanted, and it didn't make them happy. Uh, you might read the biography of Ernest Hemingway sometime, but he came to the point in his life where he could not write. He, his main objective from that point forward was to try to find a way to take his life, and he finally succeeded. And sadly, anyway, did not know Christ and uh, uh, was unsaved to the best of our knowledge, and that breaks your heart as well. I'm just trying to make a few points, and that is that you may be surprised at how to find happiness and how to find blessing. And the words mean a lot, mean about the same thing. So let's look at this passage just for a few moments. And, uh, long-winded introduction, maybe a short message. We think it would be great if we were famous or rich or powerful. Uh, we think that maybe we'd like to have people admire us or we'd like to have somebody say great things about us. Let me ask you this question, and don't answer out loud, but just think about it. When you are, uh, when you step into eternity and, and they hold your funeral service, what would you like people to say about you? Oh, he was wealthy, you know? I've never really heard that as a compliment in a funeral. People think of that if you were wealthy, that's complimentary, but I've never heard of a pastor or a speaker stand up at a funeral and say, we know this was a good man because he was wealthy. You wouldn't hear that. Uh, you never heard anybody stand up at a funeral and say, we know this is a good man because he was famous. Because there's some pretty bad people that are famous. Uh, we know this was a good man because he took the best vacations anybody ever took. You should have seen his house. He had the greatest house. You should have seen it. We don't hear those kind of things in funerals, do we? We hear people in funerals look towards eternity. Amen? Amen. And thinking things like, they'll say things like this, this. This was a man that loved God. So we understand when it comes to that perspective of life and death that what really matters is not the experiences or the possessions or the recognition we get in life, that not our prosperity, but it's who we are. And this passage will explain that quite nicely. So, in Luke eleven twenty seven, a woman comes to the Lord Jesus Christ, and she 
No, let me rephrase that. She is in the company. There's a group of people, and <laughs> you can picture this happening. Uh, you've seen it probably somewhere along the way. There's a whole bunch of people, and somebody has something that they want to say, and they are so sure that it is important to be heard that they just yell it out to everybody. That's kind of the way we ought to be with the gospel, amen? amen. Uh, you know, but there's this group of 100 people or whatever, and somebody out there says, I've got a great idea, and they, they yell something out. And this woman says, and I'm paraphrasing, whoever is your mother is really a blessed person. Whoever it is, come on in, guys. Good to see you tonight. Might be a milkshake in it for you. Uh, you know that's what's going on. We go to Sonic after church sometimes. Uh, this woman, she says, she says, oh, it would have been so good to be the mother of Christ. And truly in Israel, that is the, the idea, is, is it not? That uh, maybe they would be the, the, the mother of the Messiah. Well, it's too late for that. Mary already has that role. Right. By the way, she is not the mother of God. Amen. And uh, when the Pope or the Catholic Church or anybody else says that, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ says, before Abraham was, I am. Amen. There is no mother of God. And uh, Mary was a sinner saved by grace. Uh, she, uh, I'm sure she was saved. I know that uh, she uh, died and was buried and that she'll be resurrected with the saints and we all uh, go to the Lord Jesus Christ when he returns. But Amen. this woman says, oh, that would be a blessing. She had an idea of what a blessing might be. Now, hold that thought and let's see what the Bible has to say. If you'd like to follow along with me, I'm going to go kind of fast. I have the verses written out here, but if you want to try and turn through these, we're going to start in the Psalms. So it's pretty easy to find the first one, Psalm 1-1. One, one. Psalm 1-1. One, one. And let's just see what the Bible has to say about being blessed. I think we want to be blessed, don't we? Amen. And we understand as Christians that you're not going to find blessing in sin. Uh, you're not going to find blessing in the world. You're not going to find blessing in uh, doing things that are ungodly. You're going to find blessing from God. He's the one that can bless us. And so the Bible says in Psalm 1 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Amen. Now, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. You will find that that's almost perfectly in harmony with Luke eleven twenty eight, 28, where Jesus says, Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Amen. Just to tell you a little secret. When you sin, God put this thing in us called a conscience, and your conscience will make you miserable. Yeah. And if you are a Christian, your conscience will usually be a healthy conscience, and sin will really make you miserable. Say, oh, if I committed that sin, I would be happy. And, and Moses described it really well. There's a, a season of pleasure there, but it's very short. And then there's a price to pay, and it's called guilt. And uh, even, even lost people have a conscience. Uh, if you talk to a, a person who investigates murders, they'll tell you that quite often their best ally is going to be the conscience of the guilty person. Because it will continually harass them until they finally let the truth come out. No, there is a lot of happiness to be found in obeying and hearing what God said and doing it. Psalm 1 1. And by the way, just for the record, in the Psalms and in the Old Testament, we don't hear the words saved and lost quite so much. We hear the words righteous and wicked or righteous and ungodly. And, uh, and, and if we're saved, we ought to be righteous. Amen. 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 And we ought to live a godly life. Psalm 32, 1. Blessed is the man whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Aren't you glad you're saved? Amen. Uh, you know, even if you don't have a whole lot, even if you're in pain, and even if uh, you, you, you kind of have to live from day to day and all the things that we, uh, that we find uncomfortable in life, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Amen. And uh, if you had to live a life of need, poverty, trials, suffering, whatever you want to call it, uh, and then step into eternity and live with Jesus forever, that would be better than have, having been the richest man in the world and dying and going to hell. That's right, amen. amen. And unfortunately, sadly, I should say, uh, too many rich men do die and go to hell. Psalm 34, 8. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. 
if uh, <coughs> somebody made a promise to you, uh, let's say, for example, somebody promised, uh, well, let's just go a long way here. Somebody promised that they were going to take care of you for the rest of your life, that they would meet your needs. If you had, if you had trials, or, or not trials, if you had needs, uh, something that was uh, necessary in your life, they'd provide that. And uh, let's say that that promise came from someone who was very wealthy and able to do that. Um, when something came up, rather than worrying about the need, what you would say is, oh, that's okay, uh, because I've got someone to pay for it. It's sort of like insurance, although we don't trust insurance a whole lot, do we? No. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, I, I went to the pharmacist last week, and I had to get a couple of medications that I'm taking, and uh, the pharmacist said, there will be no charge at all. The insurance company paid for the whole thing. Ah, oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Half of my regret of taking medicine is having to pay for it. Amen. And uh, so if they're going to provide this for free, we'll see what happens. And uh, there are some side effects, which are a matter for another, another day. But anyway, it's nice to say, hey, somebody's going to pay for this. Somebody's going to take care of this. Let me ask you this, folks. Can God take care of us? Amen. 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 Well, here's a better question. Did he promise to? Amen. Yes. Amen. Uh, it's saying, you know, God can take care of things money can't take care of. Uh, there are some awfully wealthy people that have problems that, that money does not deal with. A lot of them, by the way. A lot of problems that you can't deal with with money. But the Lord can deal with things. And so it says, blessed is the man that trusts us in him. If you find somebody that is just sad, that just seems like no matter what happens, they can't paint a smile on their face and and they just always are distressed and, and grieved and burdened. I'm just going to be plain spoken. You're probably looking at someone that doesn't trust the Lord. Not that we always have to have a smile on our face in the face of bad news, but at the end of the day, I believe God's going to take care of me. Amen. 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 And there's a happiness in that. Uh, we have young people here today, and they know that if, if they got sick or if they had a bill or whatever, that mom or dad would, would help and take care of them. And they should thank God for that, by the way, because Amen. mom and dad are provided for by God. But when we have a, a, someone to take care of us that we can trust in, it gives us a blessing. Psalm 85, well, 84, I'm sorry, 84, 5 says, Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, whose heart are the way, in whose heart are the ways of them. Talking about the word of God once again, and it's kind of redundant a little bit. It goes back to Psalm 1 or uh, Luke 11, 28. Psalm 112, praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Here we are again. What you do with the word of God is going to affect your blessedness. Amen? Proverbs 8, 34. The man, blessed is the man that heareth wisdom, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. And if you want to know more about wisdom, uh, you should go to our youth group. They have been learning a lot about that this year. And then Luke 7, 23. Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. So you can see that the Bible has a completely different picture of blessing than what people in our world have. Amen. Uh, the Bible, I didn't see any verses there that says uh, you're blessed if you have a big bank account. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a good house. Or if you have a nice fast car. Or if you have uh, those kind of things. Uh, the Bible does not base blessings on simple temporal things. It bases blessings on God and the way we walk with him. Yes. Now, let's just look at Luke 11. And a couple of things here in verse 27 it won't be too long, but the Lord corrects this woman. In verse 28, he says, yea, rather. And that's a polite way of saying, that sounds good, but here's the truth. The woman says, oh, if people knew I was the mother of Christ, I would be blessed. She's really honestly basing her blessing on uh, a, a status or uh, maybe you might think of it as an accomplishment or or something that she has done uh, that because she has accomplished a certain thing she was the, the mother of Christ that people would look at her and, and that would give her a blessing and the Lord says yea rather well, let me tell you the truth that's really not right here's what's right and then look at verse 28 very quickly blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Amen. There is a way to be blessed. Amen? 
I meet people from time to time, well, maybe more often than that, that have given up on being blessed. They have just decided that life is miserable. And I feel sorry for those kind of people because, first of all, that's not true. It's not true. Uh, there will be times when you know, trials and heartaches will come, uh, but the Lord can still be a blessing to us. Amen. And not even thinking about eternity, just thinking about this life. Uh, some have given up on being blessed. They've stopped hoping for happiness. Uh, they have, in many cases, unfortunately, they turn to distractions to keep their mind off of their unhappiness. Uh, alcohol or drugs or immorality or something that would just take their mind off of their problems. You go in the wrong direction when you do that. Amen. Uh, and uh, I know some people, I'm thinking of some people that are unhappy right now, and legitimately so, because they're mourning and they're grieving. And I want you to know something. Go to God for comfort, not just to other people. Yeah. Amen. 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 Now, we can comfort one another, can't we? Yes. Yeah. And by the way, if you know somebody who's grieving or suffering, pray for them. Amen. But we pray that God can help them. I don't understand it, but I can be very sad, very discouraged, just downhearted or downcast. And, and I can get along with God and pray. And there is everything right with this and nothing wrong with it. Just tell God what's happening. Tell God what you're feeling. You may not understand why. You don't need to. Just tell God, Lord, here's where I'm at. Would you help me? Amen? Amen. Amen. And he can. And he does. Yes. And I don't know how. I just know that I can be in a, in a condition of sadness or I can be in a, a state of uh, disarray where I'm just unsettled. And I can just tell God, I'm, I'm sad. And uh, I, it may be for a particular reason. It may not be for a reason at all. And God can cheer me up. And I think if you're not feeling blessed, that'd be one of the first things you ought to do is go to the Lord. Amen? There are some people that have turned uh, away the idea that they can be blessed. And so maybe they're looking for blessings, but they're not looking in the right place or the right way. Or they're waiting on somebody else to make them happy. That's a big mistake. It's not, I mean, we ought to try to make each other happy. I like to cheer people up. Amen. Uh, and I like it when people come and try and do that with me. But truly, God is the one that can cheer us up. Amen? Yes. So there is a place of blessing. He says, blessed are they. And it's interesting, what, look at who this is available to. It's available to everybody. He says in verse 28, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. You know, blessing does not depend upon what you can or can't have. You say, Pastor, I'm, I'm a nobody. I grew up in a family that was not famous, and I'll never be famous, and I'm not that smart. I'm not ever going to get a great job. I'm never going to make a big dent in the world or accomplish a whole lot. You could be happy anyway. Amen. <clears throat> I met a fellow one time. He was a missionary to Mexico, and to give you a sense of what kind of missionary he was, <laughs> He uh, would get on the bus in Mexico. And how many of you ridden a bus in Mexico before? Okay. Once you're on the bus, uh, they're going where they're going, and you're on, and that's the end of the story. It's where hang on. And he'd get on the bus in Mexico, and as soon as the bus took off, he'd stand up in the front and preach the gospel. Huh. Amen. <laughs> bus driver didn't care. He's doing his job. He's probably listening. Maybe he got saved. And this fellow would do this day after day after day after day after day, preach the gospel on the buses in Mexico. Now, when I listen to him preach, and I listen to his vocabulary in English, or his uh, level of intellect that you can hear sometimes when people talk a little bit, whether they're smarter or not quite so smart, he was not intellectually impressive. But I asked myself the question, how smart do you have to be to stand up in front of a busload of people in Mexico and give them the gospel? Amen. Amen? And by the way, the gospel is really simple, isn't it? Amen. I'm glad you haven't got to pass an IQ test to be saved. Thank God. Uh, the Bible says the faith of a child is sufficient. And uh, that Christ has paid the price. And if you have the faith to believe in him, uh, intellect is not the issue. Uh, you, can, you can be saved. And I thought about that missionary and I thought, you know, uh, he may not be all that capable, but God can do a great thing with him. Yes. And uh, I think he'll probably see a lot more folks saved than most church members will. It doesn't matter your ability. It doesn't matter the conditions that you are in. Say, Pastor, I'm poor. Pastor, I'm sick. Pastor, uh, this or that happened. Uh, 
you know, he doesn't even mention conditions in verse 28. He said, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Talk about that word keep in just a minute. Possessions don't have anything to do with it. Those around you don't have anything to do with it. You know, you can obey, you can hear and keep the word of God, whether you're by yourself or whether you're in a big company. It's a little harder sometimes. I know that we have young people here tonight. I'm thrilled to have young people in almost every service, and a lot of times, many of them, and I hope they understand what I'm saying. I, I try to speak well enough that they can catch on to some of this. Young people understand this. You can be godly even when people around you are wicked. That's right, amen. And what you'll find out is if you will do what God wants you to do and do what's right and, and do what God says in the Bible, the people that don't like that will leave you alone after a while. Well, they might pick at you a little bit or make fun of you. I have good news for you. The Bible says when they do that, you get a, you get a special reward in heaven. Amen. So just be godly. And we have seen it a thousand times, it seems like, in Christian schools. The godly students attract godly students, and the ungodly students attract ungodly students. So they find each other. So if you're godly, the godly students will find you. That's what you want to be. Because there's no happiness in ungodliness. There's just a, a temporary, not sure what word to use to describe it, but it's, it's nothing of value. Your blessings don't depend on your identity, your conditions, your possessions, your company, uh, those people around you. Your blessing depends on two things. What you have heard and what you do with it. Verse 28. Blessed are they that hear the word of God. That's just so simple. By the way, hearing is an ongoing process. Um, your happiness is something that requires, a, 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 I say, a, a continual uh, a input. And so, spend much time in the Word of God. Yeah. Now, you know what I'm talking about. Young people, if you've done this, I, I went to talk to some young people last week, and I, uh, I said, what have you been doing? And one of them said, I think he said, I've been reading Isaiah. Or reading, I've been reading my Bible. I forgot what he said he was reading. And I thought, uh, oh, the Revelation is what he said. He was reading the Revelation. And I thought, well, you're going to need some help with that. God can help you, amen? But if you notice, I notice all the time. When you sit down and read your Bible, doesn't it make you happy? Amen. Yes. Amen? It feels good. It feels good to read the Bible. And, and much more so when you understand God's talking to you. Amen. There's something in there. If you will listen, God wants to say to you. God will say something different to Joey than he will to Isaiah or Mr. Mendez or uh, Mr. Dahlman or, or uh, Margarita. He'll, he'll say something different to us from the Word of God, but he wants to talk to us. Amen. Amen. And that gets you pretty excited when you hear from God. I was looking at a verse that's been about a week ago, and it jumped off the page. This is something for you. And uh, <laughs> in my office, I've got it taped on the wall or above my desk. I keep looking at that thinking, wow, God said that to me. I want to ask you a question. Has he talked to you lately? That's good, Pastor. Amen. Can't say a word to you unless you listen. That's right. And you have nothing to listen to unless you got the word of God. Unless you hear, amen? Well, Pastor, I'm too busy to read the Bible. That's, you're saying you're too busy to be happy. Amen? Amen. That's right. <clears throat> Blessed are they that hear the word of God. Do you believe that? Amen. I do. Blessed are they to hear the word of God, but there's one more step and I'll be done. And keep it. That's good. That word keep is an interesting word. It got me in a lot of trouble one time. I wrote an article about that word. I'm not going to talk about Greek. I, let me warn you of something. When people quote Greek to you and they know Greek and you don't, most of the time they're just trying to impress you. And uh, you do not need to know Greek to understand your Bible. Amen. Amen. That's right. God gave us a preserved word in English. Amen. And uh, so much so that uh, these people that want to go back to the Greek all the time, uh, what they're saying is, I don't trust the English. Well, folks, I want you to know I trust the English. Amen. Me too. Amen. By the way, not just any version. Not the ones written by the heretics and apostates. I have one simple question for people that use other versions of the Bible. Why are you using a Bible written by apostates? Yeah, that's good. Uh, if you good think point. I'm wrong, prove me wrong. Amen. You dig around deep enough and you'll find the names of the people that translated and also 
uh, that uh, provided the Greek for your Bible, you'll find out they're apostates. Um, I don't want to use a Bible written by apostates in the story. So anyway, he says, keep it. The word keep, first and foremost application is simply to do it. Uh, let's just keep our fingers here and go back to Luke chapter 6. I'm going to show you a couple of things in Luke if I could. Luke chapter 6. Turn there, please. Always have a Bible in church. Amen? Amen. Never know when the pastor might ask you to stand up and read, right, Isaac? <laughs> Luke chapter 6. In chapter 6, in verses 47 and 48. Whosoever cometh to me, Jesus, Jesus is speaking here. Whosoever cometh to me, and heareth my sayings, and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a an house, and digged deep, and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house, and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. He that heareth, and doeth not, is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Now, let me just save you some time. You can read that and pray about it and see what you'll see. And there's a lot there, but here's one simple thought, and that is, when you know what to do and you don't do it, it's going to cost you. Amen. It's going to hurt. The reason it's going to hurt is because later in your life, when you see the consequences of your disobedience, it'll be too late to do anything about it. Right. Uh, seeing houses that weren't built properly. I, when we were actually moved to Maryland back in the early 2000s, they had an enormous flood up here in St. George, Utah. Some of you here would have heard a lot about it. It's been about 2002, 2003. And uh, I saw a huge house fall off a cliff into running water and just be swept away. And I guarantee you the people that owned that house thought to themselves, I wish we hadn't built it there. Yeah. Where are you building your life? Young person, where are you building your life? That's good. Amen. A lot of people that are older have made decisions to disobey God's word, and it was a conscious decision, and now they grieve over what's happened. Happiness is based upon what we do with God's Word. Go to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. In the verse 19, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ apparently is in a house with his disciples. And, and then came to him his mother and his brethren, and that's his physical, Mary's, Mary's other children, uh, and could not come at him for the press. So they're trying to get in, and they can't, because there's so many people there already. In verse 20 of Luke chapter 8, it was told him by certain, which said, Thy mother and thy brother stand without desiring to see thee. Now, you would expect in a normal circumstance that what we would say is, their family, and so we're going to give them some special treatment. We're going to ask other folks to defer to them, make room, let them in. They ought to be treated specially because they're family. And, and we do acknowledge the importance of family, but look at verse 21. This is a teaching moment, is what you might call this. He answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. Amen. Simple translation, simple interpretation is a better word. We're part of God's family. Amen. You're just as much God's family by adoption as you could be by birth. That's right. Amen. And if you believe what Jesus said and ask him to save you, you are a child of God. And you get the same privileges as a family member. But look at that word there, that phrase there. He says at the end of verse 21, and do it. Now, this is not salvation by works, but I will tell you, the Lord expects us to hear the word of God and do it. Amen? All right, real quick, we're almost done. Uh, let's go to Psalm 119. We'll finish up 
I'll read you a couple of things in Proverbs. Let's start Psalm 119. We're almost done. Longest chapter in the Bible, Psalm 119. Look at verse 101. Psalm 119, 101. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Before we look at that verse, let's go back and look at verses 2 and 3. You're already there. Let's go back a couple of pages to verses 2 and 3. That's what I want to start with. Psalm 119, verses 2 and 3. I'll just start with verse 1 since it's such a good verse. He says in Psalm 119, verse 1, Blessed, there's that word, amen? Amen. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord, Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes, the writer says. And just try one more time, and I'm kind of beating a dead horse because we've made so many points already, but... The Lord doesn't expect us just to hear what he says. He expects us to live according to it. Amen. So I have a homework assignment for you as we finish up here in just a minute. When you read your Bible this week, find out what God wants. That's good, Pastor. Amen. Someone says, well, I just want to read the part about being blessed. That's what I'm talking about. There's something that God would like for you and I to do. Different instructions for different folks, but all instructions are good in the Bible. And there's something God wants you and I to do. And when we do it, we'll be blessed. Amen. Yes. Amen? Not just in eternity, right here and right now. Hey, Pastor, I'm not happy. There's your homework assignment. Find out what God wants and do it. Uh, Psalm 119, 101, he says, I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. That's a good definition for keep right there. I have refrained, refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. It is, it is possible to hear the Bible and let it slip away from us, but we need to keep it. Now, <clears throat> hearing and keeping is not a quick, okay, that'll make me happy this week. There is a lifelong Amen. effort. Amen. 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 And you know what I found out? Anything you do, the longer you do it, the better you get at it. If you want to learn to play the piano. Well, I took piano lessons one time in my life for six months. I cannot play the piano. My wife has been playing the piano now for 25 years, maybe. And uh, my daughter played the piano from the time she was three, and now she's 30. And uh, so, uh, yeah, 30, is that right? Close to it. Uh, you do things over and over and over, you get better at them. Amen. You want to learn how to do something, practice it. You want to learn how to be blessed, spend time in the Bible. That's right. And Amen. keep it. Amen. And you'll get better at it. Amen. Uh, yeah. you'll someday uh, you'll be the one standing up preaching or teaching Sunday school or whatever <clears throat> being blessed is dependent upon what we do with the word of God that's what being blessed depends upon yeah. and when you say well pastor why are so many people it seems like so unhappy because they don't know that I guess yeah. amen amen <clears throat> Somebody's going to hear this and they're going to say, well, I don't believe that. They're going to try something else. You can try all the things you want. I found out something. When God said it, that settles it. Amen. Amen. And you know, here's the interesting thing. Do you believe God loves you? Amen. Amen. And, and you, you're saved. So you believe you're a child of God and you are. Amen. Amen. Okay. So let me ask you this. As a parent, what do parents want for their children? Oh, I want my children to be miserable. Someone says, no, of course not. I want my children to have a terrible life. I, I hope my children fail and that they're just... No. We want our children, those of you here today that are children, and those of you that, that maybe even have parents here, you know what your parents want. They want you to be happy. They want you to have a good life. They want you to be happy. And what makes me sad, just about as quick as anything, is when I find out that my children aren't obeying God, and I know in the end it's going to result in unhappiness. 
But I'm 62. I tried a few things, and I found that out. I didn't need to experiment. The Bible says so. Solomon said so. Jesus said so. David said so. The Holy Spirit says so. Amen? It's your choice. You can believe it or not. Happiness is not based upon what you have or who you are. It's based upon what you do with the Word of God in your life. Amen. And some people will believe it, and some people won't. I believe it. Amen? Amen. Now, do we stray from that sometimes? Sadly, yes. The world is very good at distracting us, isn't it? The world is going to put pictures of people in the magazines and on the television and on the internet, and they're going to look real happy, and they're being wicked. Did you understand that back in Genesis chapter 3, the very first thing the devil did was lie? You think he's done lying to us? No, no. What did the devil say to Eve in Genesis chapter 3? She said, in the day you eat thereof, you shall surely die. And uh, he said, shall not surely die. He said, you're going to be as God, knowing good and evil. In other words, he lied to her and told her there was some good to have by disregarding God's word. And she looked at it. She saw that it was uh, uh, something that she wanted that looked good. And wow, it made her real happy, didn't it? Yeah. No. Well, we can learn our lesson the easy way or the hard way. The easy way is to believe what God said. Amen. The hard way is to try to prove it wrong. And you'll find out it's not wrong. That's right. Let's all stand in prayer.